Hello everyone. This time around, I want to follow up on a point from my self-driving cars uh, discussion from a little while ago. Uh, and that is the notion of liability. Uh, who should be liable if a self-driving car gets into a crash? Well, this is actually pretty much exactly as murky as it is if somebody driving a normal car gets into a crash. Uh, there, there are certain aspects of the uh, situation that uh, assign liability in different directions. Uh, whoever made the error behind the wheel it obviously gain, it has some level of liability. So if you're not paying attention or uh, you make an improper turn or something and you crash into somebody or something, you're liable for that. You're at least partly at fault and that makes you partly liable. Now, if the other person or what have you that is uh, involved is or has also made an error, then they also get part of the uh, part. They're also partly at fault and therefore have part of the liability. So that's uh, that's not particularly controversial. Uh, where it gets murky is who's at fault if there's an equipment failure in one or the other automobile, for instance. Uh, if it's a design fault or a manufacturing defect, then it makes sense to hold the manufacturer liable. If it's a maintenance issue where the owner hasn't maintained the vehicle appropriately, then it makes sense that the owner is liable. Uh, and that may not be the same person as the driver. Uh, often it is, but it isn't always. So sometimes the driver might be technically at fault because they are operating a vehicle that's not been maintained properly. But they might not re be really liable because they might have reasonably believed it had been maintained properly and therefore the, the owner would reasonably be liable for improper maintenance of the vehicle itself in the absence of some other agreement such as a rental agreement where the uh, rental agreement requires the operator, the, the holder or lease agreement requires the lessee to uh, maintain the vehicle. So uh, there's uh, things can get murky there. Um, and then there's the other side of things where there could be improper road markings, signs that are poor, uh, all, all manner of things like that uh, where the, uh, the public authorities maintaining the road or what have you have messed up and they may have some liability in a particular situation as well. Uh, so basically, who's liable? Who's at fault? Not quite the same question, but close enough that the same discussion applies. They, uh, it's a, a difficult question in a lot of situations. In a lot of situations, it's pretty clear cut. Uh, I'm driving along, I wrap my car around a telephone pole, I'm almost certainly at fault. Uh, or I'm driving along, somebody T-bones me from the side, uh, um, and I had a, a through road and they had a stop sign. Odds are the person T-boning me from the side is at fault. So those situations are certainly uh, relatively easy to assign blame and figure out what's going on. And then the more complicated ones need a bunch of arguing and wrangling and confusion and lawyers and all the other things that we throw at things like that. And, and eventually we come up with a mutually dissatisfactory uh, arrangement or uh, somebody caves and somebody laughs all the way to the bank or something like that. Uh, so that's our legal system and obviously we have issues there. That's not germane to the discussion though of who should be at fault or liable in the case of a car crash. Well, uh, basically I've said that there are several parties that may be involved in, in, the, in the liability equation. It could be the manufacturer of the automobile. It could be the driver. It could be the owner, who is not necessarily the driver. And it could also be the whoever's supposed to be maintaining the roads. 
or it could be some combination of all of them and it and that can apply on both sides if you have two automobiles involved so the question of who's liable is not a simple one uh, in all but the simplest cases it can be a, a real pain to figure out who should pay the damages and this doesn't change when you bring a self-driving car into the mix you still have a driver but in this case the driver is some software that has been and a package of sensors and so on that has been uh, created by probably the vehicle manufacturer or or subcontracted to a software house or something like that so now instead of having a meat space biological driver you've got uh, some other thing that serves as the driver and that thing doesn't have free will or whatever agency that we ascribe to living human beings and it doesn't have uh, any uh, any way to deal with liability it, it doesn't make decisions uh, on that level it, it doesn't understand consequences it doesn't have a model of the universe in its brain it's at least currently it doesn't um, and uh, may, uh, I'll try and get back to that point at the end uh, because that would distract from the current situation so uh, in in the self-driving car situation we still have the manufacturer being liable for mechanical design faults and manufacturing defects. We still have the road maintainer liable for errors with the road. And we still have the owner liable for proper maintenance of the automobile itself, the physical systems. That's brakes, oil. Uh, you, you know, steering, all of those mechanical systems that do wear over time. And also for making sure that when a fault is discovered, it is fixed. Okay, so those parts of the liability equation don't change. The driver part of the equation, though, is a little murkier, but not much. Where the driver would be at fault in any other accident in a self for a self-driving car the driver would still be at fault it's just in this case the driver isn't a person the driver is then a collection of software and sensors that work together to control the automobile so who is liable in that case if that screws up well the ma the makers of the driver would be uh, liable because the driver itself cannot be uh, and that means that if the automaker has manufactured the sensors sensor package then and that failed then the automaker will be responsible for that if that's what caused the crash if the automaker subcontracted a, uh, a you know the software out well the automaker would still be the person of on record making the uh, uh, the software but they would be able to pass liability through to the software house so just like subcontracting anything else um, you don't necessarily not have liability because you subcontracted it to somebody else, but you can make that somebody else feel the pain if you feel the pain, and you should. Uh, so that's basically the situation as I see it. Uh, the bit that fails, whoever made it, is going to have to be liable. And I don't think we need any substantially changed regulations to handle that side of things we just need to make it explicit that in the absence of a biological human driver then the the purveyors of your of the uh, software and sensors package that controls the automobile is the is where the liability rests if that if the driver screws up now I sh now back to that point I said I should talk about later if the control system 
the driver happens to be sentient, self-aware, and has choices in what it can do. It has and has the ability to uh, operate independently. Then maybe you can shift the liability back to the actual driver in that case. But to do that, you have to make sure that that driver has the freedom and the ability to, uh, to earn money and all of that stuff. And that means that uh, we've got a whole other can of worms there if we ever do make sentient machines. Uh, and uh, it, it starts to become uh, really, really problematic. Uh, and uh, th that's something that we'll have to revisit when it uh, comes when it comes about. I say when because it's almost certain it's going to happen at some point. Assuming we don't destroy ourselves first uh, in some manner, uh, but uh, it's pretty certain that at some point something will crack the artificial intelligence thing and we'll end up with self-aware machines and, and all of that. And then... All bets are off. Um, but hopefully uh, that's some time off. And as long as our autonomous cars, the, the driver in them, is not self-aware, is not, you know, uh, a person, uh, and we're going to have to deal with that issue, that's a different problem altogether. But as long as the driver is not an actual sentient person, then whoever makes the, the driver or is responsible for the driver in whatever way, um, they need to be liable for any screw-ups. Now, if you're looking at this from the perspective of the automaker and thinking, wow, that's an absolute massive new liability they've got. Well, you're right. There is a potentially massive liability there. But... The thing to keep in mind, that is, if they make their self-driving con car control systems properly, which none of them have yet, but if they make them properly, then we will have far fewer accidents involving a self-driving autonomous vehicle than we will with, from, from vehicles operated by a biological driver. As a result, if you're comparing the number of accidents now across all cars, and you're just figuring that will translate unchanged if all the cars on the road suddenly became self-driving. Well, you're being a bit disingenuous if you're doing that. Uh, properly functioning self-driving cars will be safer drivers for a number of reasons. They will, be, they will not get bored they will be looking further ahead on the road. They will be able to see things coming from the side that, that we would probably miss. And they will be able to operate more appropriately according to road conditions and vehicle conditions. As a result, they will be surprised a lot less often by something happening up the road a piece. Because of that, the self-driving cars should, on average, get into far fewer accidents. And more of those accidents, a much larger proportion of those accidents, will be just that, actual accidents, where the thing happened but was potentially not avoidable, right? Uh, where you're not actually going to be able to assign blame to a driver in, in that case. Uh, it, it could be a sinkhole opens up in the road, or uh, a massive gust of wind comes out of nowhere and blows one car into another. Those types of things that come up, which you wouldn't consider to be the fault of the driver. And you'll have far more cases where the... Uh, 
uh, accidents that humans will end up having don't happen because the uh, autonomous control system can have better sensors. So they can actually see that wildlife in the ditch uh, in the, at night where we can't because it's obscured by darkness and grass and everything else. Whereas the autonomous system could have LIDAR or radar or infrared or any number of things that would allow it to see things that we can't. Furthermore, as the issues with the control systems are discovered and corrected, these autonomous vehicles will get safer over time. Human drivers will not get any safer over time. Uh, we're just not going to. It's a fact. Um, so... Overall, the self-driving cars, I believe, will be involved in far fewer at-fault incidents. And that means that the liability the manufacturers will face will be far lower in the long run, and even the medium run, and possibly the short run, than the liability faced by the biological drivers in aggregate, okay? That's my, my theory. And as the number, as the proportion of, of autonomous automobiles on the road increases, the total number of accidents should decrease. Now, this does all hinge on the manufacturers developing their software sensibly, according to uh, very careful processes and very careful testing uh, so that there are a minimum of situations where something unexpected happens. Though, with the complexity of what they have to deal with, that uh, number of, you know, that unexpected stuff is a lot more common than you might like. Still, overall, once the dust settles, I think the auto manufacturers will end up with a relatively small increased liability risk over what they've already got for their, all of their complicated driver assist systems that are in current vehicles, like lane, lane assist and uh, uh, you know, braking assist and all of these things which are being developed over time and will all go toward improve toward these autonomous systems. So they've already they've already picked up software liability because they're doing so much of their uh, their stuff in the automobiles with software these days. So I would think that their legal people have a fair handle on what their liability probably looks like. And I think realistically uh, when the dust settles that's it, the the picture isn't going to change all that much. The difference will be what does the car owner have to carry for insurance? Well, you'll still want to carry your comprehensive insurance which covers you know damage to your car from things like wildlife and and hailstorms and things like that, and you'll probably need to carry some sort of liability insurance. Um, for when you do something that uh, screws everything up, if you happen to be deemed at fault. Uh, but the premiums will probably be substantially lower in the long run. In the short run, the insurance companies are going to try to gouge everybody, and the, uh, the premiums will be way higher, I suspect. Um, but in jurisdictions where the insurance, the liability portion of the insurance is attributed to the driver's license, then that will have to be borne by the manufacturer because the owner of the car is not, uh, like that, that part of the liability will have to be covered by the manufacturer and there, and there will have to be a corresponding reduction 
in driver associated, driver's license associated premiums, but that will happen as people drop their driver's licenses when they no longer need them. But I expect there will be a shift uh, away from uh, insuring the driver and uh, to just insuring the vehicle like a, lo a lot of jurisdictions already do and insure and the uh, manufacturer ends up with liability that they have to cover uh, if they their stuff screws up. Now, I, I figure that's probably what will happen and I suspect there will be uh, a lot of regulatory wrangling and all of that will happen because it always does uh, over time and, and eventually the dust will settle and we'll have much safer transportation networks simply because humans aren't operating them for the most part. So anyway, the liability thing, I think, is mostly a red herring. Uh, I don't think the equation really changes all that much. No matter how confusing or complicated the self-driving car autonomous system thing actually gets. Uh, who is liable? While the situation is a bit murky, is no more murky than it would be with a human driver. And that's really what it comes down to. I think anybody that is arguing that we can't do this self-driving car thing until we get the liability question sorted out is, is either not really understanding the situation uh, well, or they're building up a straw man so that they can say, see, autonomous cars are a bad idea. Look at all this complication. So uh, there you have it. Uh, that's my ramble on liability and self-driving cars. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, uh, make sure to subscribe and uh, enable the notifications with that uh, bell icon thing. And if you like the video or you didn't like it, uh, you know, give it a like or a dislike. Apparently it helps with exposure. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.